Greetings gamers, it is I, Frost Gamer. Coming to you back on YouTube with a new season of Death Battle. As you all know, the Death Battle series is incredible. Oh, and last episode, oh man, was that a season closer. Whew. Right now, oh, season 6 is on. On now. And whole man. Aquaman versus Namor no more however you say it. And I I just know that's gonna be one deep battle. Get it? Deep C <laughs> Okay anyway. A joking aside. And I wanna play some things out. First off, uh I was working on a top ten video for this this season, figured, you know, i try again, uh, haven't finished yet, so, uh, I'm gonna be trying to before the next episode, so that's, like, three days, or three weeks from now, right, so, we'll be working on that, uh, also, uh, been... We're going on other projects, uh, such as, uh, well, getting recording stuff so I can actually do gameplays that aren't, you know, rough looking. But, uh, for right now, uh, I'm doing pretty good. Look what we got. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, hey, uh, it's slow going, but I assure you, we are going to this in so uh let's close this tab you can discover the secrets hidden within your genetic repulsion and eating coming up today to Ooh, this is battle and... again that's 23andme.com slash death battle mr t simple that's new Ooh, that's big you know the phrase there's plenty of fish in the sea yeah Real obvious, but it turns out there's a bunch of superheroes down there, too. I don't think you understand what that phrase means. Like Aquaman, the king of Atlantis. And Namor, the first mutant Namor, and that's right. also king of Atlantis. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze <laughs> their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. They don't get mermaids. I mean, they're kind of hot, but they're fish people. And then when you meet them, all they want to do is try to kill you. I guess Tom Curry got to be one of the lucky ones, if you know what I mean. After a chance meeting, Tom was left to father Arthur, the son of a mysterious woman of the sea. Though she thinks she was knocked up by a fish Jesus wizard? It's not important. Comics are weird. Regardless, what? Arthur learned to hone his aquatic powers from a very young age. When Arthur was just two years old, poor Tom thought he had drowned when he was actually just playing with some fish while breathing underwater. Tom trained Arthur to master his powers until eventually his mother showed up with a heavy dose of truth. Arthur was the rightful king of the underwater city, Atlantis. Ah, I wish there were more stories about parents coming back in real life too. And so, Arthur would descend the ocean depths to claim his birthright and maintain the peace between land and sea as the king, the superhero, Aquaman. Oh, are you one of the people who thinks that Aquaman is lame? Well, think again! He's super strong, super fast, and can chill deep underwater for as long as he wants. And no, he doesn't just talk to fish. He dominates their brains and forces them to bend to his will. Uh, only if he has to. He prefers to telepathically communicate with them, and most sea life respects him enough to come to his aid. Except for piranhas, apparently, which ate off his freaking hand. I know you're a hardcore badass, but make those Jeez. fish bow to your kingly kingship, damn it! Not to worry. After a few gaudy hooks and a magic water hand, he got better. Arthur controls sea life by tapping into a worldwide phenomenon yeah, the called part, the clear. That's kinda like the force from Star Wars, but just in the ocean. Through the clear, creatures he controls increase in strength. Some even become capable of breaking Green Lantern constructs. Also, Arthur's powers are not limited to just aquamarine life. 
he telepathically communicates with all sorts of animals and can even tap into the human mind. Oh, wait, wait, you're telling me he can mess with my what? brain too? Oh, get my hat, Wiz, the shiny one. Well, he has difficulty dominating more intelligent life. His octopus friend Topo is one such example of a being he cannot forcibly control. What's so impressive about that little guy? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Got it. And for humanoids, the most Aquaman can generally do is cause a headache or maybe a seizure. That doesn't make me feel much better. But while that Aquaman has plenty of power on his own, he also draws from the mystical might of his most iconic weapon. The legendary Trident of Poseidon! And also the Trident of Neptune. Wait, isn't that the same god? Aren't they the same thing? Yep. Well, kind of. They both can control water, summon storms, create force fields, and unleash lightning. That one can teleport. Awesome! Come on, do it, Disney World! <laughs> you have to be in water. You think beer will work? Maybe? Jocelyn, get the kiddie pool and the keg! I'm going to Disney World! With added flight, <laughs> hydrokinesis, earth manipulation, and more, okay, Aquaman's trident was a perfect symbol to prove himself a mighty king. Literally, he's strong enough to push around oceanic plates, throw a submarine around with water magic, and lift this giant cruise ship. This ship appears big enough to compare to the world's largest cruise liner, the Symphony of the Seas, which weighs an incredible 228,000 tons. He's fast enough to keep up with Wonder Woman and swim around the whole planet in just an afternoon. Oh, and he even fought the ancient dead king of Atlantis, Atlan. This guy was so strong, he sank Atlantis centuries ago with one blow from his scepter, and Aquaman held back a repeat of the same attack with his bare hands. While there's no official size for DC's Atlantis, it is officially considered a continent. Therefore, it has to have a greater landmass than Greenland, the largest island in the world. This means Atlantis must consist of more than 836,000 square miles. Dang. To sink or destroy it, Atlan must have been outputting potential energy averaging more than 155 trillion tons Dang. of TNT. Damn, everyone's always making fun of Aquaman, but he's pretty badass. Well, he does have one rather lame weakness. He's essentially fueled by water. If he's away from water for too long, he'll start to dry out, lose his powers, and eventually die. He lives under the sea, he wears yellow, and he's absorbent? Wiz, I figured it out! Oh! oh no, 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 SpongeBob. Moving on. Well, Aqua King Thank has you. found some ways to work Wiz. around Thank the you. water problem. He can hydrate himself with blood! God damn, that's hardcore! Even with his that's flaws, Aquaman is always pushing forward to protect his people. He may seem strange and silly, but he truly is a worthy king of Atlantis. Tell the surface dwellers to respect the sovereignty of my seas, or we'll return and finish what we've started. Oh uh, yeah, he did show up as a guest. We all know this story. And, uh, a wayward and sailor and meets a mermaid and princess, and, and they the fall in love. Except this time, the fish people got to be wedding crashers and dragged the princess back to her secret home of Atlantis. Her dad was pretty pissed, but he got even more pissed when he found out that uh, Daddy's girl had already been knocked up and popped out a brand new kind of superhero, Namor the Submariner. The favor of Atlantis is the Did prince of the game? game. Unlike those strangely similar aquatic superhero DC would create two years later, Namor would grow up among his fellow Atlanteans from the start. As the Prince of the Ocean, he received an impressive royal education, along with a sizable distrust of humankind. Yeah, I'd have a problem with humans too if some of the first people I ever met were Nazis. As the rightful heir yeah, to the throne, it was Namor's duty to protect Atlantis. And with his mixed heritage, he had plenty of unique right. abilities to do so. He's got superhuman strength, speed, and durability. He can store water in his body and shoot it out of his pores like a human sprinkler, which is gross. Far more yeah. impressively, he can telepathically communicate with all types of marine life, including other Atlanteans and can persuade them to follow his commands. Whether it be a squadron of armored sharks or a giant killer whale, the creatures of the sea follow the first mutant's lead. Did that you say mutants? Yes, what a mutant technically whale. Namor is a three-way hybrid of human, Atlantean, and mutant genes. Unlike other Atlanteans, he possesses right. the mutant Inhumans. power of flight. Oh, is that why he's got those tiny little wings on his feet? I always thought those were like little rudders. Nope, he flies with them. Wow, that is dumb. Namor can also mimic the abilities of marine life, 
sensing lateral lines like fish or absorbing and discharging shocks like an electric eel. And for even more power, he wields his legendary trident. All right, how many tridents does this guy have? Let me guess, four? Just one, the trident of Neptune. But I thought the other guy had a trident of Neptune. Oh, I think I just figured out why Aquaman had two different tridents. There you go. <laughs> well, this trident's got a bunch of cool magic oh, powers. Uh, it can I, control water, I really don't get lasers, I don't get turn people invisible, and if Namor needs some backup, he can animate objects and his surroundings to create living beings to fight alongside him. And that's not even the only magic oh, doohickey wow. Namor has. He can use the horn of Proteus to summon sea monsters like Giganto, which is a super whale with arms. Look out, birds with arms. I'm starting a new subreddit. The Giganto oh, is strong enough to withstand the blast of an atomic bomb, and yet it still pales in comparison to Namor's own strength. No kidding! The Submariner is strong enough to match the savage Incredible Hulk, who's lived at 150 billion tons of rock for over a minute. If that's not good enough for you, how about the time Namor held up a whole freaking island all by himself? He's quick enough to catch the Human Torch, absorbed and discharged electricity powerful enough to injure Doctor Doom, took on Thor trident to hammer, survived a mountain falling on him, and even resisted the mind control powers of the Purple Man. See, Boomstick, in the grand scheme of things, little winged feet aren't so bad when you could have been called Purple Man. All right, Namor is pretty <laughs> awesome for an elf in a Speedo. Excuse me? This is not a Speedo, Jimmy, okay? These are my panties from Atlantis. <laughs> too bad he gets a bit, uh, unstable if he's out of the water for too long. True, Namor's had a strange history so, uh, of shifting personalities, sometimes even playing the part of villain. Apparently, his bouts of anger Oh, for the love of commercials! Oh, that's a cool big one. Alexa, dim the light. Okay, well. Bits of anger stem from a strange bipolar defect brought on by oxygen imbalance. Which, last I checked, isn't quite how bipolar disorder works. No, Wiz, I have the same kind of problem. I get super evil and grumpy when I haven't had a beer in at least 24 hours. 24? Uh, twelve, six, two. Screw you. Boomstick, that's a chemical dependency. Ah, just like my personal hero, Bane. You're missing the point. Oh, so... you think the point is your ally, oh, but you my... merely adopted the point. I was born in it, molded. How about that point? God, it with us that at the end of the day, oh, oh as long God. as there is water in his veins, the avenging son is a heroic king of his people and a terrifying opponent. Know that I am Namor, ruler of the kingdom of Atlantis. Your time in the sun is over. Sheesh. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, I wonder if Blue Apron has any fish on the menu this week. By now, you've probably uh, tweaked. Provoking without weapon for defense, including the. My favorite part is feeling like a master chef, making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip up with ease. Check out this week's menu and get sixty dollars off at blueapron.com/battle. That's blueapron.com. Okay, hey, not gonna do that, but uh, let's see. Well, first off, uh, wow, huh. I guess I'll explain some characteristics of Namor. Hero, but can go evil. How is he not uh, in therapy yet? That guy would have been dragged right into therapy if I had seen it. It, huh, both have the weakness of being weakened on dry land. Okay, that's going to be a tricky challenge. Of course, I've seen Aquaman outside water many times. And so, I suppose his durability may be stronger? Mmm, it's tough to say, but Aquaman has two tridents so compared to the one, so double power there. So... It's going to be tricky to say, hey, compared to the f two. 
I'm just gonna say Aquaman Mash battle. Sense. Blue Apron. DC a better way to cook. Catching up. But right now, it's things. time for a death battle! Plus, I can't hey, know what it is. Yeah, so. <laughs> Look out below! Peasants, you dare splash the Prince of Blood? Plenty of space around the pool, Spock. Really? That's what starts the battle? A pool party? You may be a prince, but I am the king of the seven seas. Wow, there's no... What? Really? <laughs> well, that's new. So is that. Wing feet. Definitely <laughs> taking advantage there. Ooh, he just missed the water. <laughs> That's not good. Understand your Oh dear, Piranhas. Oh yeah, sharks. You are such a terrific dumbass. Forever <laughs> shark, the last buddy. Deep. Let's see whose power truly controls the sea, shall we? I dig it. I can barely see what's going on. Seems we're evenly matched. Or maybe I've been saving another trick. No! You control me! Impossible! Whoa. Yeah, that's definitely I'm new. Out of boys. Oh, Jesus! Yep, made the right call. On the king tonight. Oh man! KO! Oh man! Am I underwater, or am I just sweating so much from how intense that got? Aquaman and Namor's powers were so similar and well-matched, this fight could have reasonably gone in either one's favor. In fact, neither had many powers that the other did not possess in some way. Like how Namor had his mutant wing feet, but Aquaman's magic trident could let him fly too. Still, while Namor could really? certainly have won this in some <laughs> circumstances, Aquaman had the potential he needed to take the victory more times than not. Namor could match Savage Hulk, who held up 150 billion tons. But remember, Aquaman stopped Atlan's continent-crushing attack, right. which had a potential that, energy over 150 win. trillion tons of TNT. Not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison, but consider Namor's own similar feat, keeping the island Utopia from falling. We can estimate the island's size and weight using this panel, coming to a little over 178,000 tons. Considering the weight applied as force through the pillar Namor was pushing up, this means the potential energy exerted onto Namor would only be 1,425 tons of TNT. The energy Aquaman stopped was 109 billion times greater. Sure, Namor was yeah. fast enough to easily catch up to the Human sometimes Torch, who flies over 140 real. miles per hour on a normal day, and sometimes even thousands of times the speed of sound. But Aquaman has routinely kept pace with Wonder Woman, who has been frequently shown to move thousands of times the speed of light. 
Yeah, but none of that strength and speed would matter if the Submariner just ordered a bunch of sharks to eat him first, right? Namor could command sea life, sure, but Aquaman could directly dominate their minds and force them to act on his will. And while Namor can telepathically communicate with other Atlanteans, he could not create hemorrhages or seizures like Aquaman could. Though Namor could certainly resist these mental attacks, similar to how he survived the Purple Man, this is still solid evidence that Aquaman's telepathy was more powerful. Oh, and don't forget, Aqua King can make his underwater buddies physically stronger with the clear, while Namor was stuck commanding plain old everyday fish. Overall, while their extremely similar powers were so closely matched, Aquaman had the edge in just enough of them to prove himself the strongest king of the sea. Aquaman could see victory, but at least Namor tried it. The winner <laughs> is Aquaman. Okay, go for it. Hey, thanks for watching the first episode of Season 6. If you want the battle music for yourself, click the link okay, below. Want a new show to watch? Check out Genlock. It's crazy. It's got mechs, anime, awesome news, Michael B. Jordan. And somehow, I made it into voice character. Click the box. Okay, that's new. <laughs> Actually, battle whales have happened before, but <laughs> it's been a long, long time since we had one. Seriously, I think the last one was as Pokemon. Um, uh, yeah, Pokemon. On, on, on with if Charizard, Blastoise, and in the big frog. Okay, it's been a while since I played Jet One, but you get the idea. Yep. Yeah, wow. <laughs> there are five different generations of Mega Man. Well, uh, six if you count the cartoon. Not bad, but needs work. Like, let's do that. Okay. First off. Holy mackerel, that's one on a crazy sprite battle. <laughs> and not the craziest beginnings I've seen, but still, woof. They forgot the fight part, so... Either that or they stopped doing that. And for time saving. So... Well, either way, that was a uh, death battle, everyone. Season 6. Going in strong. And so far. And before the Mega Man battle, I shall try. And I mean try. Tint. <laughs> oh my god, that's good Jesus. <laughs> try to finish the top 10. So, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Like and share if you have. Please give credit to the original owners of this video and... And I'll see y'all next time. Keep on gaming, gamers. Peace out till next time. Bye.